The final report for the B-17-909 accident is out, and Blanco Lirio and Flywire take a look at it while we're at Sun and Fun. Stay tuned. Hey, Scott Purdue here uh, with Flywire, and today we're going to take a look at the uh, the final report that from the B-17-909 accident. Uh, I'm going to do it with uh, uh, Juan Brown at Blanco Lirio. We were down in Sun and Fun, and we took a, a little time out, and we uh, talked about uh, the final report and some of the highlights of it. There weren't any big blockbuster uh, changes, but uh, there were some really interesting things that uh, that came out about it. So. Stand by. It's Saturday, April 17th. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. We're here at Sun and Fun 2021 where it's fixing to rain Saturday. And uh, tomorrow, Scott, is you just reminded me, tomorrow's the anniversary, another annual anniversary of the Doolittle Raid on Tokyo. Wow. Scott Purdue, Flywire YouTube channel. So the final report came out on the crash of the B 17 909 up in. Um, what well, was it, Connecticut there, Windsor Locks. Were there any surprises in the report there? What'd you, what'd you think of the uh, NTSB work on that final? Well, they got it, they got the probable cause right. Mm -hmm. you know, Dan would be happy about that. Yeah. You know, it was the, basically it was the pilot that mishandled the emergency. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was pretty evident. It didn't take a whole lot to figure that out. Yeah. But for me, actually, the biggest surprise was the toxicology report. Hmm. that came out yeah. and, and I don't remember going seeing that very much detail in the docket mm -hmm. so the big one from that one is is both the pilot and the co-pilot had elevated uh, carbon monoxide poison but it wasn't wouldn't that just be a byproduct of the accident itself or I don't think so because just a, a very short amount of times like when the airplane hit and then started burning um, I'm not a doctor. I didn't sleep on Holiday Inn Express last mm -hmm. night, so maybe I get this wrong. But I think it would take exposure over time. Not yeah. Not they weren't seconds. even up that very long. Well, they weren't up for yeah. five minutes. Yeah. So uh, that's not an awful lot of time. But they were taxiing, etc. So um, I think to get elevated like that would take time. So mm -hmm. there's that issue. Mm -hmm. They didn't study that. Mm -hmm. okay. And the other one is is that the pilot had uh, two different cardiac drugs okay. for uh, hypertension and for arrhythmia mm -hmm. and he was taking those and those are special issuance kind of drugs I don't remember seeing his medical if he had a special issuance yeah. medical oh, exactly uh -huh. so I didn't see that in the docket I'm gonna go back and look at it again and see if I missed that mm -hmm. but what I remember is is that his medical uh, was a class 2 and it was current but it was only for glasses like I have to have mm -hmm. okay and then uh, the the question wasn't, uh, did he did Max shut down the wrong engine? It didn't really matter in the end, did it? It actually didn't matter. Yeah. It's just an argument about uh, at what actually happened. It didn't change the fact that, uh, mm -hmm. that he turned in the wrong direction and there were two engines out and he didn't fly the airplane fast enough. He was below BMC for a two engine out. Yes. And, yeah. uh, that was, and then he put the gear down. It was disaster. Yeah. Yeah, so altitude, airspeed, and ideas all at the same time. Uh, that's where you've got two engines out on one side, and he's down to nearly 100 miles an hour. And so he's got to reduce the power on the remaining two good engines just to maintain control of the aircraft and not lose it to a VMCA roll. Yeah, and that and that is that is exactly what happened when they after they impacted the lights. And that point about the power being on, when you look at that footage as they, the, the final bit there, uh, when they do hit the lights, that power on would be, well, a number of things. One is you're wrestling a beast at this point. It so is. it's likely that Mac at the controls had both hands on the yoke and the right seater is probably just terrified at this point. And the lack of CRM, nobody's really got the throttles, right? There's, you know, nobody has the throttles. There's speculation that they're, they're, that it was kind of when they hit, uh, it was an automatic reaction to push the power up. Mm. It may have been a conscious reaction to push the power or up. Or was it because of the lack of, they mentioned this in the report, the lack of restraint, shoulder harnesses, that sort of thing. Could you be thrown forward or 
even the crew chief, did he end up on the throttle? He didn't report that. Uh -huh. And but he didn't he didn't say that because he he actually sat down next to the bell okay. turret mm -hmm. on the on the floor unrestrained mm -hmm. by this time. But um, it's possible, but I would think that would happen only when they impacted something. Mm -hmm. Just having the right wing hit, I mean, they hit they hit the lights and then the, the right wing hit the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would have been enough, and it wouldn't match the time when the engine noise increases. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say one thing about Yeah, the was there something on the timeline? Yeah, the, the I have something to say about the timeline, but the engine noise increasing, there's a, there is a possibility, and they didn't study this, there is mm -hmm. a possibility that the in, that's just an artifact of where the recording heard it. Mm. So in other words, the engines were already up. Mm -hmm. It's possible, the engines were already up, and they just heard it. The Doppler it as it comes past the as camera past on the audio. The, yeah. Okay, so it, it may sound like the power is coming up, but it may just be a, a steady power setting. Right, and and so that they didn't look into that in mm -hmm. any detail. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a there's some holes in this report that I mean, does it matter? No, mm -hmm. it doesn't actually affect what happened in the accident, but you know, be I mean, from a, an anal point of view, it'd be nice to know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. the timeline mm -hmm. and, things like that. and what was it? There was a point on the timeline you wanted to make. Yeah, the I read, I read on the, the final report versus uh, the rest of the docket, right? Right. Yeah, when you read the docket, they actually have a really good uh, breakout of what the timeline was, and they an analyzed it and where things happen and stuff like that, and they matched it with what radio calls were made. Mm -hmm. And they know, you can tell pretty much where the gear was put down, which was early, but it was on more or less downwind. Mm -hmm. It was an ugly downwind, but it was more or less downwind. But on the timeline, is it has it happening as the first thing. Oh yeah, they got that backwards in the, uh, just a yeah, it was, clerical it, error, we it, don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing, that, I'm sorry, but the thing that bothers me about this is mm -hmm. this is the final report. Yeah, you gotta get the final. Exactly right. You got to get it right. I mean, mm -hmm. and it brings into question the rest of the conclusions in the in the report. How how professional well, was it done? The report itself, but the conclusions yes. are pretty conclusive, and it's well, it, you're right. It's uh, you're right. It he it's mishandled. Clear -cut. He mishandled it. I mean, they have incidences of B-17s in World War II with huge amount of battle damage coming back on one engine. Right, and they could do that because they're up at altitude and they've dropped yeah. their loads and they're coming down from a high energy state. Right. Uh, this was a low energy state to begin with, from just the, the worst case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. And he did and he didn't make it any better. When he put the gear down it was he had a small window where he could have landed on the, the uh, cross runway and that's about it. Just gone around and come right back to the cross runway rather than take it all the way around to the yeah. runway that he, he took, off. took off. Yeah, because he was actually when he put the gear down he could have made a right base mm -hmm. and then just landed there, mm -hmm. and uh, that would have worked okay, maybe. But they didn't. It sounds like on the radio they're not that the emergency wasn't that big a deal. We got yeah. it. We're coming yeah. on around. Yeah, We're fine. we got it. We got to come yeah. back. They weren't. They didn't declare emergency. They didn't recognize how bad a situation they were in. And this, of course, is a long sequence chain of events that goes all the way back to the organization, the structure of the organization, and the lack of oversight. Uh, from the top down, and that's that's what I thought the NTSB did a good job on yeah. was 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 breaking out the long chain of events that led to this. Yeah, I, and I agree tragedy. with that. And in my video that I did on the, the first one I did was basically this is a cultural problem. A cultural problem. Right. Yep, yep. And normalization of deviance and <laughs> all of that. Yeah. Very good. All right, Scott Purdue, Flywire. Check out his channel. He's got a lot of good warbird experience and so that makes him a expert witness on the b-17 situation and i sleep in holiday and expresses that's right i sleep in dan's camper <laughs> sun and fun 2021 see you here well there you have it as we said there was uh, some really interesting things that uh, were kind of highlighted in the final report but overall it wasn't anything really new so interesting stuff uh Anyway, hope you enjoyed, enjoyed watching uh, Juan and I take a look at the, at the video, or sorry, in the video, take a look at the report. And uh, uh, if you liked it, hit like and subscribe. It looks a bit here like this. And go to, go to Blanco Lirio. He's on fire right now. He's got a lot of stuff going on, so uh, a lot more prolific than I am. But uh, I enjoyed, enjoyed working with him. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flywire.